This time around, we're going to take a look at the seven hidden admin centers in Microsoft 365 that you simply have to know. So if you're ready to learn, stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Andy here, so nice to see you. Especially if this is your first time, I really do appreciate you dropping by and clicking that button. All right. Hey, and this episode, I thought I would take a look at what I think are the seven most useful hidden admin centers in 365. My, they're terrible, aren't they? They kind of hide things so that they're difficult to find. And then of course, when you end up doing an exam, they kind of throw the uh, secret question on you. Well, have no fear. In this episode, you're going to learn them all. Now, as with all my videos, I definitely recommend uh, that you watch the video at least twice. And um, because if you watch it once, it's just kind of unfamiliar. But the more times you watch it, of course, the more that information sinks in and that you learn it. Now, if you've not subscribed to the channel, we love subscribers. Uh, so hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you'll be notified of any future videos uh, and interesting postings. And of course, I love your comments, questions, and feedback. So please just get them down below there. So I think without any further ado, uh, it's time to jump in with the seven hidden admin centers. Can you guess what they are? Let's take a look. So for my number seven, I'm going to kick things off by heading into the admin center here in Microsoft 365. And if I click on show all, of course, there is nothing here to indicate Microsoft stream. A couple of ways that you can get into this though, if you want to, you go down into all admin centers and you can see that we have a, a number of familiar ones, but also a number of unfamiliar ones as well. And we have Microsoft Stream here and this will take you into the admin center itself. All right. And again, that's one way to get into that. Uh, another way that you can get into the same place is simply by going into Microsoft Stream. And it's amazing how many people don't know this. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to come into Microsoft Stream. And if you've not used Stream, by the way, it is absolutely awesome. So a couple of things about Stream. You can have your own YouTube. And the great thing is you can even create your own live events and this integrates with the likes of Teams and Yammer and so on. So to do that you simply can either upload videos or you can schedule your own live events. You can have multiple channels. It's truly awesome and it's amazing how many people don't use this. Um, one thing though if you don't see the live event option it's because you've got a small business plan and um, you need to have an E5 subscription or an, uh, a separate subscription to stream. A couple of things over here um, in terms of hidden admin settings, you can actually switch the portal into admin mode. And this allows the administrator to manage other content. So other users content, including private content on there. All right. So again, if you're going to use that, you maybe want to have some kind of disclaimer. The other option here is I'm going to click onto the gear icon and as well as my settings, I can also get into the admin center settings here as well. So here in the admin center, you can create additional stream administrators. So if you want additional users or groups to be administrators, you can do that. You can also set up here spotlight videos. So when channels are opened by users, um, any videos that you want to be highlighted will be added here. I mentioned live events and you can see here, this shows you what's live now and also what uh, events are upcoming as well. And you can see, you can set this up 
Um, again, you may not want your users uh, creating live events. So this is a really useful setting. Just click that and only these users and groups will be able to create those live events. And that is one of the only places in 365 that you can do that. Um, company policies. So again, if you've got a web page with kind of acceptable usage policies and things like that, you can pop that in here and you can also require your users to go ahead and accept that uh, policy uh, as well. Um, usage details is always useful. So again, if you've used uh, kind of 85% of your storage, uh, it will flag up a message to the administrator and of course, you can also see that we have the usual recycle bin here. Now we have groups here. So these are groups. Um, and of course, these are linked in with Microsoft 365 groups as well. Um, if you need support on uh, this or any of the topic, of course, this links you to Microsoft support and any comments of any videos will actually appear here as well. Um, content creation. So um, again, all users are currently allowed to upload. So again, if you want to restrict that, however, to specific users and groups, you can do that here. And you can also restrict company-wide channel creation. So again, if you don't want a company-wide channel that everyone can see, again, we have some additional settings here and also default viewing permissions, which are definitely worth having a look at. Now, um, if you are doing live streaming, the chances are you're going to work with an enterprise content delivery network. So again, there are a number of options to choose from here and you simply sign up uh, to their organization and they will give you the appropriate information to paste, copy and paste into here. All right. And this is something new. This is stream migration. So again, if you're move or migrating from older systems, um, again, this is a, a new uh, stream migration tool. And also you can manage user data here, which is really useful. So things like reports, and also you can see any deleted users here. So that's the first of our admin centers. That is Microsoft Stream. So for my number six option, this is something that absolutely every Windows administrator needs to know. So I'm going to come down into all admin centers, scroll right down to the bottom, and we have the universal print admin center. Now, Windows 10 introduced the concept of universal print, and the idea of this of course, is on a, in a company, of course, you're going to have print servers within a company. You can share out printers. Now, nowadays, of course, most printers are internet based and you can share them out. So super simple. OK, what you do is you can deploy either printers that have got are already set up for universal print or you can set up connectors. OK, so any connectors I can go ahead, I can manually install a connector. And by the way, this also supports uh, Windows uh, printers that don't support um, universal print as well. So this is a truly fantastic feature. Now, uh, as you can see, I don't have any printers here. I'm a Mac user, um, but I just wanted to draw your attention to this. It's absolutely really super, super simple uh, to go ahead and set up. OK, um, so basically install the connector or use the connector. Uh, you can share out printers so you can share a printer out on a, a network just by, um, of course, um, just giving it a, a share name. Search for that printer on your network that's using universal print. And again, you can specify what level of access. By default, everyone can access it. But if not, then you can only choose like, for example, specific members if you want to do that. So it could be like a, a management printer or something like that. All right. So really super simple to set up. 
Um, again, we also have a document conversion feature as well. So if you're using, uh, for example, non-standard Microsoft documents and things like that, it will automatically convert them uh, as well. All right. And again, you can switch that feature on. Uh, more details on that. There is a technical guide there. So definitely take a look at Universal Print, which is now available. Now this next one is super useful if you're interested in deploying uh, Microsoft Office. And of course, what we mean by that is when you, whenever users go into this page here, which of course is the Office homepage, um, they have an option here to install Microsoft Office. And you can install it for the PC, of course, you can all also install it for the Mac. Um, I'm often asked, Andy, can I manage and configure that? And the answer is absolutely, and check it out here. You have the Office Configurator here in the OWL Admin Centers, and here you can do some very cool things. You can create uh, Office Deployment Policies, um, again, allows enterprise users to manage the policies for all of your users, and you can also manage device configurations here. And if you're, this uh, works alongside the ODT, the Office Configurator tool. So basically what we have here is you've got uh, a number of different options. You can set different channels for deployment. And in here, we have got some customization options for devices that you're using. So you might be using, for example, uh, Windows 10, Windows 11 devices. And in here, you, you can have a number of different types of configuration. So any configurations that you want to design yourself, standard configurations, and of course, modern app settings as well. So again, to create this policy, I can simply uh, come here. I can create a deployment customization tool. I can specify if it's 32-bit, 64-bit. I can determine uh, which apps, which version of the apps do I want to deploy for my users. So if you're, for example, got an enterprise volume licensing option, uh, you can choose that or you can just use the standard kind of click to run. Um, you can say, do you want Visio project, any additional products put in? Um, of course, you also get things like Word and Excel in there anyway. And um, then you have got uh, the update channels. Now, if you're using uh, the likes of Microsoft Intune, you know that you can have different update rings in Microsoft Intune. And at the moment, I've not set that up at the moment. All right. So um, uh, again, if you're choosing volume license into information, you can see here that you have got some options here. So this is showing you basically what's going in there. And once you have clicked and gone through all of these different settings, basically by using the Office deployment tool, it's essentially creating an answer file and you can call this marketing. Um, XML, whatever you want to call it. And again, you can simply then download that tool. Um, then once you've created that, um, the next thing you want to do is you maybe want to create some uh, management uh, tools in order to manage those policies. So if I just call this, let's say HQ, and if I go into next, I can say this policy configuration is applied to users or specific groups, or it can go to users that access documents anonymously. So for example, you might want to do separate policies uh, for the web. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to select the group at the top and I'll just type in sales and we have the sales team here. I'm gonna click onto that and I've now added in a group.
So the next thing, of course, is the actual configuration policies. Now, if you're familiar with the likes of group policy in Active Directory, you, this will be very, very familiar to you. Um, so you can see that we have got lots of different kind of standard options here. Now, if you want to change any of these, so for example, um, if you want to say, I, I never want to cache data, you can simply click onto this option and you can see that this essentially is group policy. This is what it's doing. It's amending those group policy settings. So you can go through here and every week, every month, there are more and more of these settings uh, coming in. So the that's the idea anyway. So once you've configured all of those settings, um, that's it. You're you're pretty much done. Okay, and then I'm just gonna once you've finished, you simply click on next. That's it. We've now assigned it to those users, and I'm now going to go ahead and I'm going to create that configuration policy, and that's pretty much how it works. All right really, really powerful feature. So if you're deploying software to your users uh, and you want a very simple way of doing it, uh, again, no, you don't want to type out command lines and things like that, then this is a really fantastic tool. All right. Um, other things that you've got in here as well, you've also got the health of your apps. So things like, are they up to date? Um, thing you can also, we have a, a new feature with OneDrive Sync. So uh, I'm going to cover OneDrive in a later session. Uh, we are currently in preview for this. So again, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to enable OneDrive Sync. So this will manage, of course, any uh, apps that are in um, uh, users uh, OneDrive for business and things like that. So if there's any kind of sync issues or, you know, they've got duplicates and things like that, that can be quite useful. All right. So that's currently in preview. Um, we also have an inventory feature as well, which again is really nice. So of course, once you've deployed this out, uh, you'll have a nice uh, inventory uh, of everything. So an inventory of all your apps and how they've uh, been deployed and who they've been deployed to. So there you have it. That is the Office Configurator. Definitely check that out in the Admin Center. So the next one is the Endpoint Management Tenant Settings. And you can find this in Microsoft Endpoint Manager, of course, AKA Intune. And in here, uh, as well as being able to manage devices and apps, which I've covered on many videos before, if you've not seen them, go ahead and check them out. Uh, you can also manage Endpoint Security here. Um, the other thing that we've got here is also a full tenant admin center here. And this is something that you definitely have to be aware of because there's an awful lot of information here. So not just things like connector status to what the tenant is connected to, but also things like the service health uh, and any kind of message centers from Microsoft, okay? So other things that we've got here, as I said, you've got tenant status, you can also um, set up remote help here as well. And this is, of course, things like remote, de remote desktop connections. So if you've got um, a current um, uh, remote help session going on between yourself and let's say a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 users, you can see all of those um, uh, connections going on here. And uh, again, you can switch this on or you can switch it off. And there is a full docs.microsoft.com guide here on how to do it. It's super simple, by the way. Now, the other thing that we can also have is you can configure um, what we call the Microsoft Tunnel uh, Gateway. And of course, this is if you're using things like VPNs or split VPNs into your organization. And the likes of traditional VPN, what this does is when you connect through a VPN, come into your organization, 
and then the user starts doing some general browsing um, you know, in a web browser, it's consuming all of your bandwidth within your organization. So what this does is it offloads it to Microsoft. So that means that Microsoft, um, you know, the kind of regular traffic, it takes that burden uh, off you. So again, definitely check that out here. It talks about how you can set up and manage, uh, for example, tunneling service here. So whether you're using hardware or software, so you can set up configurations between uh, different locations here. Likewise, you can also set up VPN profiles um, to the Microsoft tunnel. And for example, if you're using Android and iOS devices uh, here. Um, details on any connectors or tokens. So again, if you want to enable things like the store for business sync, um, and let's say your users have purchased apps or you've deployed apps to your users, um, this will keep those apps in sync. Okay. Um, again, you need to have a subscription uh, for this service, but it's essentially typically a one, two, three type option very, very simple to set up. Now, um, the next thing down is the Windows Enterprise Certificates. So, you know, you're in an organization, you maybe want to deploy a digital certificate for authentication purposes. Um, you can bring that file in here and then, of course, upload it. All right. Uh, likewise, if you're not using a Windows Enterprise Certificate, you can also have a public DigiCert Digi one uh, here as well. More information on that can be found here. Um, again, if you're using side loading keys or any keys to side load uh, applications or any kind of software, you can add those keys in here and that will of course then be automated. Um, Endpoint Configuration Manager. So if you're using Config Manager on-premises, this would show you kind of the links between uh, that, that uh, connectivity. Um, you do need to have current branch version enabled for Config Manager on-premises. But once you do, you'll be able to see that. Um, we've I've talked about Apple Tokens. Um, so do you want to create an Apple uh, token for your organization? Uh, again, you can sign up for the A Apple Volume Purchase Program. Um, and this can be really useful. In fact, it's a requirement if you want to manage those uh, Apple devices, for example, in schools and things like that. All right. Um, other things that we've got, you've also got things like privileged identity management uh, roles. So, of course, we also have different roles within Intune as well. So, uh, again, these are some of the sub roles that Intune has here. So, for example, if you want, if you've got like a junior admin and you want to give them that um, help desk um, administrator role, then, of course, you can do that there as well. Um, privileged identity management. So if you've got an EMNS uh, and an E5 subscription, you can do that. Uh, and that, again, I've covered this before. This would just then take me into Azure Active Directory's uh, privileged in, uh, identity management. Um, uh, this would take me into Azure AD privileged identity management. And if you wanted, let's say, you know, you've got a couple of users, you don't want them to be permanently assigned a role, maybe it's just a temporary or just-in-time feature, then this is where you would do that. Um, I've done sessions on this before, by the way. So you, if you go into the identity area of my um, YouTube channel, you'll be able to see that there. All right. The rest of it, of course, is just pretty much logs, diagnostic settings, um, you've got things like uh, the end user experience. So things like end user customer, any kind of customizations you want to add in. So things like branding settings, support information. So rather than your users contacting Microsoft support, you may want them to contact you, of course. You can also set up notifications and terms and conditions. So when a user connects to a device or opens an app, they have to accept your terms and conditions.
So if you're auto enrolling devices, we have a new feature called, well, it's not new, it's called Windows Auto Patch here. And again, this allows you to do auto patching of Windows 10 and Windows 11 devices. You do need to enroll with the service. So again, you just select the agreement and again, you go and do that. So, you know, you might want to definitely take a look at this. There's some really good documentation uh, there as well. For my number three, I'm here in Azure Active Directory and I'm going to click into the public preview for Microsoft Entra. Now, I kind of get the feeling it's not entirely finished yet. And again, there's a few things that's missing from the menus, but it's going to give you an idea of, of everything that's going to be included. Now, of course, it was announced not that long ago that Microsoft Entra is the new name for everything to do with um, enterprise identity. So, of course, security, of course, we've got the, the Defender brand, you've got Priva, of course, for uh, privacy management, and of course, Entra, you've got for uh, identity. And this encompasses three products, so Azure Active Directory, Permissions Management, and also Verified IDs, which are currently in public preview. But as you go through each of the menus, things start to look quite familiar. I kind of like the way they're laying these out. It's got very much a 365 SharePoint look and feel about that. So it's nice to see that we're getting a kind of standard look and feel for everything. So definitely go ahead and check this out. This is the Entra portal. Um, just to say that if you want to try permissions management, you can do so. There's a trial license available at the moment and you can kind of try it for 30 days. Likewise with verified ID pre previews as well. So it's available in preview. You do need to have an Azure account with this. Um, so you can set yourself or pay um, a trial account for 30 days um, for that. You also need to create an Azure Key Vault. So and the setup process will walk you through everything. And again, I'm going to cover this in a future session. So there we have it, Microsoft Entra. So here we are in Microsoft Defender. Now, I have to be honest, the security and compliance centers are growing uh, at an exponential rate. Um, the number of tools and the number of technologies that are coming into these products now are really quite overwhelming. And you, you have to wonder, um, OK, where are they going to put all of these different tools. So are they going to start rolling up menus and, and adding different features in here? Um, possibly, but um, actually what they're actually doing is if I go into the settings area here, we're starting to see more and more hidden admin centers. So in here, this is where I would manage Defender for Identity. So Defender for Identity, and this is a really, really important sneaky little hidden portal because you can do an awful lot of stuff with this. So not only can you manage VPNs, you can view health issues, um, you can also redirect the portals as well. And of course, remember that the Defender for Identity product has actually been in integrated with cloud app security or defender for cloud apps as it's now known as microsoft have gone crazy with their uh, naming um now obviously when you bring in devices um, you can either you've got users you've got devices and you've got groups um, so the nice thing is you can actually uh, tag these uh, entities now as well so for example if you've got a, a honeypot server that you want to lure potential hackers into and this is quite useful it's nothing unethical in my opinion it's just giving you an idea of what the hackers are going for and how to defend against their uh, known attacks and you can also set up notifications here as well
For my number one, I absolutely love this feature. Here I am in Microsoft Teams. Now, of course, a traditional Teams admin, you would go in through the Teams admin center and manage most of the teams there. And as a team admin for, let's say, a specific team, you might go in to the actual Teams tool itself and do some administration. Well, we now have an additional tool which you might want to take a look at. And this can be found in the Apps menu. So simply uh, go into Apps, and if you do a search for Admin, and you can see here that we now have the new Admin App tool. And simply go in here, we click on Open, and this will then install the tool. And you can see that we now have an Admin App tool uh, within uh, actually Microsoft Teams. So as an administrator, if you want to, you know, allocate permissions to uh, junior users, management, and so on. And the cool thing is you can see, I now get those same menus. I get those same settings that I would in traditional Teams. Isn't that cool? I love this feature, by the way. And um, so you've got things like settings, you've got messaging settings, you've got webinars, you can manage policies, um, all of this is available in the Teams uh, app. I think it's absolutely fantastic, now available from the uh, App Store. So there you have it, that's my seven uh, admin tools that you simply need to know. And you know, they're kind of tricky to find. Hey, listen, I would love to know what your seven would be, or did I miss anything? What would you have uh, included uh, in that list? All right, anyway, listen, I really appreciate you st stopping by and sticking with me. Uh, remember, if you've enjoyed the session, hit the like button. It really does make a big difference. And if you've not subscribed, come and join the community. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and uh, you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much for dropping by, and I'll see you next time around. Stay safe. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.